What's up guys? It's uh, quarantine season and uh, winter's coming up, so cars are going to put away. But before Akeem puts away his track weapon, we're going to have a sit down and a talk. Welcome to the Greasy Fixes segment called Built to Talk About Car Drives. We saw you this time last year, and the car looked a lot different than it does now. Oh yeah. What have you done to this car since we saw you this time last year? So this time last year, the car was on jack stands with no transmission in it. Um, it had uh, a lot of missing components on the interior as well. Um, everything was, took a while to put back together and source parts and everything. Um, We've started with the, the biggest thing that was done uh, from last time to now was the rebuild of the transmission. And um, we've had to source parts from all over the place, uh, all over North America and uh, from Japan actually, from Toyota, because this car is ancient and parts are very hard to find. So it took a while to source some of the transmission components. Um, and once those were all put together, um, or once those arrived, I actually had an LSD which I bought off of a guy um, on one of the forums from California and uh, had B&M transmission here in Ottawa uh, slap the transmission together because they're, they're the best guys in town for transmission anything. Um, so they put the transmission together, they gave it back to me. Um, I had once, because the transmission was out of the car, I decided to clean it up and paint it, clean, just make the engine bay look a little bit better even though it's not a show car. Um, and we put it back to put the new clutch in from Ottawa Clutch. Um, so uh, the transmission rebuild, we got a stage two and a half bully clutch um, just with a resurfaced flywheel. Um, I didn't go with a lightweight flywheel or anything because we're not uh, on, on any boosted application, it's not necessary. Um, so we, we installed those, put the new clutch, in, uh, the transmission in, and uh, did the first start and drive, and everything seemed pretty. Uh, pretty good um, compared to the old trans, well now I wouldn't say the old transmission, but the, the way the transmission was uh, with its high mileage, um, it was at 475,000 kilometers on the original transmission. So it was due um, and uh, it was quite a phenomenal experience once uh, having to do the first drive um, and then we also um, had some, I had some extra welding done to reinforce the wing on the back because uh, I was showing signs of stress crack on the rear. Um, there's still a lot more that I actually want to do and probably further um, reinforce that. Um, other than that, I did some air brake duct, uh, air brake ducts, 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 quacks. You put some quacks. In the I put car. some quacks in the car. Um, yeah, I can see. I can see. The, yeah. Uh, then don't mind these. Actually, they're kind of messed up right now because uh, I'll explain that later. But uh, these were they were working. They were functional. They're kind of messed up now. Um, so anyways, did some brake ducting because uh, in the previous season I experienced brake failure actually at the last event. Um, somehow we didn't die. So, so when you say brake failure, what exactly happened? Uh, so pads overheated, disintegrated, pretty much cracked. Like the pad, the backing, sorry, the material of the pad actually came off the backing plate, pieced out. And all that was left was the backing plate of the pad. And so it was like basically metal on metal, no brakes. Right, so like ideal for track. Pretty much, yeah. You, yeah, you know, when you're like going into a turn, you're like, oh shit, we're gonna die. <laughs> um, so yeah, that happened. So that was the result of uh, heat, too much heat. Um, those pads were warranted nonetheless because um, they were supposed to withstand that kind of uh, force and abuse. Um, what, 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 what kind of brakes are you running right now? Um, so the factory I have, calipers, I assume, yeah. Fact, well, re, but they're all new calipers. They're factory spec. Um, I did all new calipers all around, new brake lines all around, uh, type 200 brake fluid, um, so the high heat stuff, and uh, stop, stop tech, stop tech uh, rotors. I had Hawk HP Plus pads in the front, those are the ones that failed. Um, we sent them back to Hawk and got a replacement. Right. Um, because they, they, even they said that that wasn't supposed to happen, like the pad, they actually, what happened was it was the driver's side that completely d d dislodged from the backing plate of the pad. When I pulled the passenger side off, it was actually showing signs of cracking, so that side was just behind it. If it didn't happen at the same time, it was going to happen. Right. 
So um, anyways, got the replacement pads um, and uh, did the brake ducts for cooling, which seemed to help a lot this year. They seemed very effective, well, for the one event that I got out this year because of COVID. Um, uh, what else? Uh, for the brakes. So, so StopTech pads, Hawk HP Plus, and for some weird reason, Hawk doesn't make rear pads for this car, so I had to like mix match. Like, Wait, so you're saying for some weird reason, yeah. they don't make performance no. parts for a Solera? They, no, they make for the front, but they don't make it for the rear. So that's, that brings up another question I wanted to ask you. How, how was finding performance parts for a car like this? Because obviously th th this was built as a luxury spec vehicle uh, for a cruiser. A cruiser. It was a, it was a grand touring vehicle yeah. for old people. Basically, yeah. Right? A so sport car, cruiser, your I imagine driver. like finding parts was kind of difficult. Yeah, it is. Um, pretty much everything that I've had to do in this car has been more or less custom. And if it wasn't custom, it took a long time to find. Right. Um, from everything from exhaust to intake to uh, coil, well, the coilovers are there, but uh, you know, you, you want good coilovers, you're gonna wait a while for them. Right. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's, parts aren't easy to find. And because of that, like I said, Hawk didn't make, I don't think they didn't show any availability for rear pads. So we had EBC yellow stuff in the rear. Um, which they're still really good brakes. I, I've, I took them apart. They're the same brakes from last year, not this past season. And I took the pads off. I looked at them and I cleaned everything up, looped everything up and put it back together. The pads are mint. Um, so they held up pretty well. I mean, obviously most of your braking force is in the front, so it makes sense why they would fail first. But uh, that's just one situation where you have to kind of mix and match uh, parts or get wh whatever you can and make it work or customize in that matter right. of fact. Um, and are you running stock ECU, stock tune? So right now it's still stock ECU and uh, obviously stock tune. Um, but i uh, been working with Donald from Light Touch Tuning for a while. And um, because this car is a bit of a unicorn, things have, again, taken a lot longer than we anticipated. We were supposed to have the ECU in this season, but obviously I didn't even get out this season. The car kind of didn't come out of storage until really late. Also because of COVID, because I didn't rush to take it out because half the track events got pushed back or canceled. So I was like, what's the point? I'm just going to save myself some money and, and re revamp everything or make whatever I need to make necessary better. Um, but anyway, it's still stock ECU and the standalone ECU we we're going with is a Mega Squirt uh, 3 Pro. And um, he's working on that right now, actually gave him a stock, a spare stock ECU, which he's going to essentially take and wire as a piggyback. So instead of rewiring the whole engine bay and the whole car and every single sensor on the vehicle, he's literally going to take the stock ECU that I gave him and he's going to take the standalone and kind of just wire it too so that when we put both of them back in, it's just you take the, 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 the harness for the car, plug it in and it's going to run right to the standalone. Right. So it just saves you so much more time instead of going to have and rewire the entire car. So anyways, he's working on that currently and um, we're forecasting 2021 spring. We should uh, have it, as soon as the car comes out, uh, we should have it running on the standalone and uh, be able to squeeze some more power out of it. It is still NA, so, um, you know, we want to, it's still reliable, it's still NA. And, um, you know, we're going to try and squeeze a, a few more ponies out of it, a few more Velosters. Yes. Yeah, we're going to a few more Velosters out of it, as it is. And, um, and then after that, we'll see what else, how much more room for play we can go if we add forced induction. Um, and that's a that's a whole different uh, topic altogether, um, but uh, yeah. So as far as e ECU and tuning goes, that's what we have in store for the vehicle. Right. Now, in terms of forced induction, are you thinking supercharged or turbo? Um, so I really, really want. What, uh, what have people done? So for the engine you have. So these cars, actually, believe it or not, came supercharged from the factory. Now, this is just an SEV6. That's what the trim is called by Toyota. Um, now, if you, back in 1999, you had the option of getting the SEV6, or you could step it up one notch and get the TRD, um, the TRD edition, which came with these, well, this beat up uh, lip kit. Um, so it came with the lip kit, it came with, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the name of the suspension. Uh, Coney, maybe? Oh, yeah. Coney and uh, TRD Coney Springs. Called, yeah, yeah. T with TRD Springs. Um, it had, I think, bigger, thicker sway bars and stuff like that, anti-roll bars. Um, it came with a supercharger, 
Um, and uh, what else did it come with? Surprisingly enough, I don't think even the TRD versions came with an LSD. So the LSD was kind of something that was sourced actually, that was put in this transmission, which I forgot to mention. I, I, I guess uh, it's from a company called Kaz, Kaz LSDs. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty Yeah, big so LSDs. they make LSDs for pretty much anything and yeah. everything. So it was a plug and play part, which managed to work with this vehicle. So now this car does have an LSD. I don't think the supercharged ones even came with an LSD, which I thought was kind of strange because you got more power, why wouldn't you want right. it? And you think you're paying more money. But anyways, you did, get, you did have the option of getting a supercharged version, which had, had all of that stuff. Um, it did come with the TRD exhaust system as well, I believe. Um, but aside from that, it was more just like aesthetics with badges, the supercharger, the, the, the suspension and handling components from the anti-roll bars and um, strut tower bars as well. Actually, this car came with a strut tower bar from factory. So, but it came with a fancy TRD one. You got the TRD VIN plate stamped in your engine bay on, on your doors and all that stuff. Um, but those are the options that were available for it at the time. It's, it's pretty impressive though to think, because a lot of, a lot of times now when, like, uh, when you have like M package and AMG packages, it's all just visual stuff. So it's really interesting to see the Toyota who right now is kind of a very reserved car company in terms of like what they put into their highest spec vehicles. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's crazy to see that even in the nineties that like they would do such crazy things like supercharger the sway bars. It's not just a visual thing. No, it's, it, visual thing. It's, it's a lot of real performance uh, upgrades to the car that actually make it worth going to that. Most definitely. Time. And that's just the thing. So I've been talking to a buddy of mine who, uh, if you guys want to follow him on Instagram, it goes by boosted Lara. Um, He's uh, been talking to him. He's he's had like I don't even know. He's like a Solera guy, like guru. Right. He's had like so many of them, um, and hence his Instagram handle, Boosted Lara. He's had a few boosted ones. Um, I actually reached out to him recently, um, and I was like, man, like you seem to like get superchargers left, right, and center. Like it's just you pick it up with the ground, it's right there. Like how come? Like we don't get them up here in Canada. They're like far. Like they're so rare. And if there is one for sale. Somebody wants like an arm and a leg for it, which it isn't worth it for me. So I asked him to find me one. He said, are you serious? He's like, I can actually get you one. So he's like, let me look into it. So he's going to look into it. Hopefully sometime in the near future, we might have that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just like going from NA to supercharge is something like I really want to do. Probably um, I did want to go turbo, but the amount of work that's going to go into it because right. there's no turbo manifolds on yeah, aftermarket. Exactly. I have to get everybody, get someone to custom make a uh, manifold and that's just expensive. Manifold and that, lines, everything. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, yeah, so the, uh, with, with going turbo, there's so much that's involved with it and like, it's not like a, uh, like a, a it's, K, not it's, it's not like a K-series yeah. SI, like a, tw a ninth gen SI where there's turbo manifolds available, superchargers all over the place, yeah. like it's not, Red, red, maybe 10, 15 years ago, there might've been superchargers laying around, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that it's really, it's coming really hard to get parts like that. You can't just turbocharge these cars. There is people who have turbocharged them. There's actually some guy in Saskatchewan who had twin charged one. Jesus. It was like twin turbo with supercharger. So I don't know, like it was pretty crazy. You probably look it up on YouTube. The video looks like it was shot with like a Nokia flip phone. Right, super right. old. That's as one would expect from Saskatchewan. Yeah, but... Um, Shout out to the car scene in Saskatchewan. Seriously. <laughs> um, yeah, so when we saw you last, you said it was on jack stands, but you, that year you were able to get it together enough to go out for a race session. With all the work that you've put into it, would you say that it's been worth, well, like the work that you've done to see it on the track and the way it performed, was that worth, worth it for you? Slash, did it meet your expectations? It actually met and slightly exceeded my expectations. With, but like I said, the biggest thing that I did last winter was the whole transmission refresh right. with the LSD install. Um, that, it, it really did wonders. Like this car, I was wasting time on the track, wasting time, just hanging corners, wheel spin for days. Like the right wheel had no idea what the left wheel was doing. It was just up in the air and you're spinning tires and your tires are wearing unevenly because you're going around the corner and this tire is just doing a burnout while this one's doing nothing. It's just dead. Um, so. The LSD actually helped me bring my time down quite a bit and also improve the handling of the car. Like I was way more confident diving and coming out of corners with the LSD because I felt like the car was actually like, it was hugging the corner more than just kind of, I'm doing like, instead of just pure steering, it was actually driving around the corner. Right. I wasn't just steering the corner, it was driving the corner. 
if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes sense. So um, you were also you also mentioned you put the wing on and you had you had it welded for. Yeah. Do you, now do you find like is this just for is this for you an aesthetics thing? No. Or do you find that it actually does add? Some I to the so I've like for the few years that I've been tracking the car, obviously without a wing and everything, I noticed that this car obviously is a V6. Um, it's very front heavy. Um, so most of the weight's obviously in the front. And that being said, the car's completely stripped inside. There's no weight in the rear. And um, the back end of the car would, if you swung it around a corner hard enough, you'd get it to slide up like a rear wheel drive car. And this car is front wheel drive, just in case those, a lot of people think it's rear wheel drive for some reason. Was well, that a Supra? I mean, but it looks like it could be. Like, it's like it, 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 no cars. Like, you know, you no, for sure. You're, it, it, it definitely could be. And I think it's got the same, Toyota is one of those companies like Honda and Nissan that like, they take one chassis and they use it for many different cars, put different bodies in different parts of it to make yeah. it something different. Yeah, but exactly. uni the chassis itself is like more or less the same. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've had this park side by side to like a Soar, for example, and they're like the same wheelbase, the same width. And actually, because this car, weird enough, most front wheel drive cars don't have a hump at the back where the yeah. tunnel is, where the back seat is, but this one does. And if you look at it on a hoist where the exhaust runs, there's just a pure tunnel, like the exhaust is down here, but there's just this open gap in the middle. Right. Like a drive shaft yeah. is supposed to be there, exactly. a diff, right? So, oh my God. Yes, Rob, we're in the middle of filming a video. Rob, we're, we're, we're doing an interview right now. Oh, true, my bad. Come through, okay, bye. <laughs> All right, where do I go? Uh, choice Auto. Choice Auto. Side oh, door. Side door. You'll see Brandon's you'll, beamer. You'll see Brandon's beamer. Okay, bye. We're in the middle. We're literally filming right now. I'm answering the phone. What the fuck? Oh, hey, man. Oh, hey, guys. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> so, um, so, okay. So, we're talk we've, we've spoken about the unique challenges you had and how the car surprised you and all the stuff you've done to it. But you didn't talk about the wiper. Oh, yeah. That was you. <laughs> Remember like seven years ago? What was it eight years ago? You were at my house. I don't know what we were doing. We were, we were we changing were, spark plugs or something. We were literally stripping the inside of the. Were we? Oh yeah, we were. Because I remember you took it. You took it around the block with a patio chair in the driver's seat. <laughs> yes. so you didn't have the seat. That's right. Um, was just at a Mexican but I remember. Place. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> No, you were, we were wrenching in the garage doing something, probably taking things off the car and doing whatever. And then I asked you, I was like, Brandon, what are you doing? Because I saw you wrenching with the wiper blade and you're like, don't worry about it. And then I came back out and my wiper blade was like that. And it's been like that for, <laughs> since. It doesn't work anymore because I did a burnout one day and chopped the harness. And anyways, that's, that's a whole different, that's another story. But that was you. And it's been like that. People ask me all the time, like, oh, what, why'd you do that? I'm like, I don't know. It's just one day some guy did it. Some Arab guy with a beard came over and wrenched on my car. And then he's like, hey, here's your, uh, here's your, uh, wiper blade. Your respect. F1 style. Fucking <laughs> Every passenger that gets in the car hates it though, because it's like right in your right vision. In your vision? <laughs> you still daily drive this thing in the summertime. Uh, kind maybe, of. Maybe not so much now. Not now. Um, but just, just like to, to speak of Toyota reliability, for those who don't know, Akeem drives the car with an on and off switch. So you'll, you'll never see it just casually cruising. There's no granny shifting. <laughs> He's always double clutching like he should have. And what, what's the mileage on the car now? I think it's like 475, almost 480. And you got it with how much? What's, what well, was, so the car was in the family for the longest time, as I may have mentioned in an earlier shot which uh, you'll probably see in this video. Um, but the car was bought originally with 20,000 kilometers on it. So it was like basically brand new. It sat in an impound, police impound for like a year. God knows why it was there, I don't know. Probably some drug deals went wrong and they seized it, I don't know. But um, anyways, I don't know who a drug dealer in this car. <laughs> anyways, um, it was 20,000 kilometers, so it was basically brand new. Was, the car was like a year or two old when it was acquired originally. And then it was daily driven throughout the years uh, by my dad for like, he did like 200, I'd say at least 210, 220,000 kilometers. <clears throat> I'd say 230 just to be safe. And then I did the rest. So from 230 on to 475, roughly, that's what I've done. So 245,000 <laughs> kilometers of just beating the shit out of this car. Pretty much. And, and it starts and drives every day. It's never left me on the side of the road. 
Really? No engine issues. I had a slave failure, so I mean that happens. My clutch pedal stayed to the ground. I got it fixed. It was like in and out the shop, but it wasn't like the car was broken, actually broken. It's right. like a slave. It happens. It was yeah. like we live in Canada. Shit rust. Excuse my language. Shit rust. <laughs> Don't need to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> shit, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about my language. Shit. Fuck sorry, shit. you bastard. Oh, sorry. <laughs> shit. Um, yeah. So like the slave, I guess the lines or whatever rusted, and then that was the that was like literally the only thing that that car has ever been on a flatbed for, I think. Right. As far as I can tell, but yeah, it's never left me stranded otherwise, um, except for one time until recently this year, actually. <laughs> now for. Obviously, nothing can happen this year in terms of race events and anything that could have happened has gone in the wind with COVID. Thank you. Uh, so for next year, what are your plans and your goals for the car next year? Um, so next year, um, I mean, now that I got like the most expensive, I want to say, part of it done, which was like the tranny rebuild, um, which cost, cost quite a bit because most of it, well, it's all OEM parts because right. there is no aftermarket really other than the LSD. Uh, next year is going to be mostly uh, focusing on aero, um, so basically like full splitter uh, side skirts and diffuser. Um, so diffuser is going to require quite a bit of work, cutting the rear bumper, cutting the spare tire base and out, welding a flat sheet there and building a proper diffuser. Um, for the front end, Kishin had raised some pretty cool ideas, uh, I sent him a picture of like a global time attack in Yada which literally had the bumper cut like pretty much halfway here and it had like a straight like air dam piece down with just right. a splitter. So it was like closed gap, no gaps here because none of this would be there. However, there was an opening in the center here just for air for the yeah. rad. So um, that's probably what, that's an idea for the front end. Um, I'm not too sold yet on cutting the front bumper, but I am 100% doing a splitter. Um, the skirt package that's on this is actually from a TRD edition car um, that I managed to get out of the scrapyard like forever ago. Um, but I'm not going to get rid of these. I'll keep them. I'll take them off the car, but I'm going to keep them just because even though they're all beat up, they're still worth money. Um, well, what you could do is flip them upside down, put them up here, and now you've got budget canards. Budget. Canards? Canards? canards. <laughs> Plus I, I don't know, man. We'll see. But... Um, yeah, so definitely got to work on the arrow for next year. I'm not going back on the track without a seat. Um, so you've been driving this whole time without a seat? Like, no, no. You've just been sitting on the floor? Basically, yeah. Hopes and dreams. Sense. Um, I had a leather seat in there originally, and then I took the leather seat out, and I was planning to get a... I was actually supposed to get a seat this past year, but I didn't because, you know, just everything, it just didn't make sense to spend money this year. Um, so I found, because I took my leather seat out and I actually destroyed it by taking it apart, I was actually going to take the base of the seat out, so when I do get a race seat, I can just use that base to bolt it into the front right. without having to do any major modification. Um, so obviously I didn't have a seat, so I called up Orin Priorato and was like, hey, I need a seat. They're like, we have a cloth one. I'm like, that's perfect. Is it black? Sure, great. They sent me a seat. It was like 60 bucks. They delivered it right to my door. Cloth, it honestly was a lot better than the leather. The leather you're sliding around. I don't know how Keishan track actually these seats in his Yeah, for those that know, these seats are out of Keishan's old uh, mm -hmm. race boat, the Mazda uh, six. legendary Mazda 6 that now lives on in a. Probably a in yellow. a Kenny Upol somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> that lives on in the yellow Mazda 6 around the area. Yeah, okay, Keishan used to track. I remember we grabbed these, I think it was these seats that we grabbed out of a, uh, a junkyard Mazda 6. Seats. Yeah, so, you're, so you got a seat, you want a seat? cloth seat which obviously right so the better. cloth seat was actually better than the leather because it wasn't sliding around but it still wasn't good because like you're literally like on the track like holy shit because <laughs> it's, it's a luxury car you're, you're it's like you. well exactly it's meant comfy. to be comfy yeah um but like you're like on the track and you're like using your knees like against the door against the center the whatever yeah. yeah and like at the end of the day your knees are all bruised because like you're like holding yourself like you're literally doing like this with your arms to brace yourself with the wheel and your legs like you have no like your core is just like all over the place you right. know so <laughs> any else cars uh yeah so <laughs> 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 uh shit so any else cars 
Um, yeah, so I'm planning on getting like a Sparkle Sprint seat. It's like the cheaper end of like FIA approved seat. Yeah, yeah. But it does the job. Exactly. I don't need like an expensive like $5,000 bride seat. Um, but yeah, just I want to get a seat at least. I don't care about the passenger. The passenger can just hold on for their life. Yeah. Actually, you know, it's funny. Um, speaking about passengers in that seat, like they're also not going to only have a fun time sitting in a stock seat trying to hold on for their lives. But like the last time a passenger was in my car, actually Rob can probably vouch for this. In my car, like as a passenger around the track, like you know like the little like where the window switch is, there's yeah. like a little like thing you can put like change in or whatever yeah, your yeah. phone. Well, that's usually bolted in so like it's like a solid piece, but I probably had the door card off once upon a time and I never actually put the bolt back. So like it's just, it's just kind of like clipped in there. So if you pull it hard enough, it'll just come out. So like passengers are on the track and they're just like going around a corner and it's like, oh shit, like I'm holding your door panel basically like right now. But yeah, so I'm getting a seat. Um, a wheel would be nice, but like, is a wheel necessary? Maybe is it? I might, I might have a wheel for you out of a uh, Subaru. A Subaru. We used as a an ice it's, racer. Okay. It is it like an NRG thing. wheel? Yeah, it's the only. It was out it's out in terror. Okay, true. It's the only good thing that was on that Subaru. Okay, well maybe we'll see how it works. I just need an adapter piece. I can go to D and D and yeah. order one or something. Yeah. But yeah, so seat, arrow, and. Um, Got to do something about like the wing because it's got to be reinforced. Like, like X-brace. X-brace or maybe even a chassis mount. I don't know. Who knows? Sure. Sure. That's, it's just ideas. But I know it has to be reinforced. It's still, it's still sturdy. It, it's not going to go anywhere. But I'd like to be safe rather than like driving down the track, doing like 180 and it just flies off. Flies off. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, it's, it's, and you've done a lot of the work yourself too, right? Um, a lot of it, yeah. But uh, I mean, I've also had like, I, I don't do welding. I don't do wiring. Right. Those are two things I don't do. But I mean, everything else, I mean, actually, you know what's funny? Remember, you helped me install the coil over like 10 years ago. Yeah, it was at Cashman's house. At Cashman's house, yeah. and somebody installed this side backwards. I remember that. Yeah, I, I <laughs> <laughs> Somebody installed this side backwards, so we had to like fix it, and then it was fine. And um, yeah, so most of the stuff, yeah, um, I had to source like the headers and stuff, which I found uh, actually off a buddy from London who had one of these and I guess he was going to put them on his car but he ended up selling it so I bought it off of him and I bought the wide pipe off of him as well. Um, so the stock wide pipe I think was like an, a one and a half inch wide pipe. It's like really small, really, when it goes underneath the oil pan it sandwiches down to this. Right. So it was like super restrictive. Um, I think it's like a two inch wide pipe to a three inch cat back, cat back exhaust. Yeah. It's got a cat, we'll just say that for legal purposes. <laughs> Um, it's got a meow going back um, with a HKS high power muffler. So um, the muffler, funny story, has been on a like five cars that shoot flames. So I don't think it's really a muffler anymore. It's just kind of like a muffler for to say there is a muffler for there. Legal purposes. Yeah, because like you know the internals are like not really there. Yeah. It's All like and yeah, it's like it. pretty much yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's why I guess why the car is also pretty loud. But um, pretty loud. It's it's all right. All yeah. right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the those are the things that I really really want to get on doing for next year. Um, probably work on some venting as well for like the hood. Um, I thought about getting like uh, carb uh, not carbon. Oh my god. Inserts uh, for the hood like the. Right, little cut, little. Yeah, exactly. Flashing. There's like templates you can get, which they usually come with the inserts, and you just tape it on, trace it, and cut it, and then you just like I think you. Uh, what do you call it? What are those guys that? Rivet yeah, rivet. Exactly. I was gonna say those stance guys. They do the rivets. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. But yeah, so rivet it in. Um, other than that, I think that's the uh, arrow seats. Reinforce the wing. Uh, cooling. Probably replace the rad with a Mishimoto rad because right. I have a stock rad in here and it's all right. Car doesn't overheat, but it's the cooling is never a bad thing yeah you know what I mean it doesn't matter if your car is not overheating it's like the more cooling the better um, so yeah that's uh, one of the things probably look into poly mounts poly mounts and I want to see if I can get some like I I heard I don't know if it's true but I think white line makes like chassis bracing for like underneath like X braces underneath the car right, right. just to stiffen it up some more because I mean this thing is a yacht yeah and so I mean, there's probably a decent amount of chassis flex, so that's another thing. So I want to stiffen it up a little bit, but uh, yeah, that's probably most of what I want to do next year. Um, I was also working with, uh, I was, uh, somebody else approached me about some racing stuff and joining a team and stuff like that, which 
I won't really discuss right now because I don't think we're supposed to until we actually discuss it. Fair enough. So just say that like somebody approached me about like they, they've seen my progress. They've seen the, the things that I've been doing with the car. They, they haven't reached out any like recently until uh, they haven't reached out until now, like probably about three weeks ago. But uh, they've been noticing on Instagram, on Facebook, like they see me, I have them. I just, we never talk, but right. we know about each other um, through like, you know, the car scene and track works and stuff like that and whatever. But um, yeah, so that's something that probably is going to have a lot of influence on what gets done next year um, and how much gets done. Yeah. So um, once we work out those details, uh, we'll know in concrete exactly how much we're going to be able to accomplish. We might be just be able to do everything from the arrow to the seats. To actually, I forgot about a roll cage. That's like one of the biggest things that I've been, that's been on my mind for like the last five years was getting a half cage welded in. Right. So cage, seats, aero, basically are the biggest things right now. Um, as far as more power, like force induction, that's something that's like, if it comes up, it'll happen, but it's not a priority. Right. I'm happy with the car as it is. I don't need 500 wheel horsepower to have fun at a track. It's yeah. more about just like getting better at what I do because I give this car like another three, maybe four years of track time. I'm never going to sell it, but I'm going to move on to another project yeah. because there's a point in time where it's like, you've got to retire your Jersey, hang it up on the wall right. and just park it in your garage and admire it. Right. Yeah. Because there's only, you know, I want to move on to something bigger, something faster, uh, maybe rear wheel drive even. So we'll see what happens at that point, but right. at least another three to four, maybe five years of this. Um, it doesn't mean to say that we'll never track it again, even once I have another car. Right. But it'll just be like once a summer kind of thing. Just take it out. Oh, there's a lapping day. Let's go lapping. Let's take this thing out instead of the 700 horsepower car that might, I might have in my garage or something. Yeah. Whatever. Right? For sure. But yeah, so those are the biggest things for it. Awesome. Well, we definitely look forward to seeing what, what next year brings. Hopefully that deal with the uh, that race team works out for you and it's super beneficial for you because obviously like it's cool to see Miatas and Porsches and stuff at the track, but it's also, there's, there's a lot more... Uh, it's more interesting to see cars that you wouldn't necessarily see on the track out there. That's so true. Definitely like something like this. Yeah, I've been approached by like a lot of people, yeah. as, like at CSCS especially. Um, a lot of people have been like, is that a Solera? Like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see like, you see me coming down, ripping it down the straight, down to turn one, and people are like, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what is that? I've never seen it before. I've seen one on the street, but there was like an 80 year old guy driving it. What's right. going on? Right. Um, yeah, so I mean, like that's just the biggest inspiration behind it is because it's like it's a unicorn. Like nobody, nobody builds these things. Like right. and, and the people that do, there's nobody here. Like they're all down in SoCal. Like these guys have shops down there. They do custom everything. Like they have, I'm sure there's a big turbo. There actually there's a guy in Toronto. Um, if you guys know about Dyna Motorsports, is it Dyna Motorsports DMT? Yeah. Um, they have a thousand horsepower Camry. It's literally the same car. Just in a Camry body, it's the same car, thousand horsepower, same engine, same everything. But I mean, like, how much money went into that to make yeah, a thousand exactly. horsepower? Right? So I'm not the only one out here that's modifying them, but to this extent, to like actually making it a full-blown track car, not just a street car, um, there's no one out there that really does it, right? Awesome. Well, guys, thanks for joining us on this segment of Built to Drive. Uh, this is part two of Akeem's progress and build with the Solera. And we're all super excited to see what's going to come for 2021. So thanks for joining us on Built to Drive. I'm Brandon. This is a Greasy Fix production. Thank you and have a good night.